that is affordable. And and we can find that. I'm, I must say, when I worked, I would, you know, I, I'm not a good shopper, but twice a year I would go to France and in the little streets in Paris where I lived, I, in, in half an hour I could buy the two or three outfits for the year. And they were always, you know, they were classic and timeless. But, you know, I could wear them for work, and if at night I had to go to a restaurant or to a concert or the theater without being able to change, I knew they would be appropriate. And so we have that much more there because uh, people don't have the amount of clothes that we have here. You know, we, we, we don't spend generally the kind of amount on clothes. We spend it on food and travel. So, so there is a difference, but I, I think it's changing too slowly in my in my book. But it's changing. I'm glad to hear that my observation has validity because it's either this or it's that, and I haven't seen this transformation yet of yeah. style, professionalism, and femininity coming yeah, it's, together. It's the in between that's kind of lacking. You know, it's either too casual or too like tight, colorful, or you know, not not really business looking, uh, you know, some of the outfits you could wear at the beach and now especially with the uh, with the amount of uh, overweight and obesity, you know, a lot of designers are um, there's no something tailor. It's everything is like like you look like a, a burlap bag, you know, it's like no sh- shapeless. And so it looks, it, it doesn't look good, you know. You've you've got to have some kind of, of form. But on the other hand, you know, you don't want an opening that's like shows half of your breast or uh, pants that are so tight. I mean, you know, it's it's that kind of um, middle ground that, that's not yet understood maybe by designers. There's not much you leave out in this book, Women Work and the Art of Savoir Faire. You didn't leave a thing out. I mean, I checked. I read your entire book. You just hit every single delicacy, every single nuance that could be found. I thought it was a wonderful book. By the way, French Women Don't Get Fat was one of the joyous books I've read in my life. And this book was wonderful, too. How are you today? What is new in your life? What are you doing today? And how often are you visiting that market in New York and buying fresh food? Well, actually, I went uh, went yesterday morning because I just got back from France and I wanted to see what was there. You know, in France this year, we were really spoiled because we had uh, an amazing spring. And so, of course, in Provence, it's it's apricot and cherries and strawberry season. And they're so sweet. Uh, I can't remember. I mean, I have to go back to my childhood to finding a food that was so amazingly sweet and luscious. And here, it's we haven't quite come to that yet. The strawberries were a little bit watery. Um, things like peas and asparagus, and you know, the vegetables were great, but we haven't we haven't had good tomatoes left yet. And I think we need another few weeks, but. I'm going back next week, so I won't see them until I come back after Labor Day. I was speaking with a very well-known doctor who was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Medicine, Dr. Richard Lippmann. He wrote the Mm -hmm. book Stay 40 Without Diet and Exercise. He's really an anti-aging genius. And we started to talk about France, and I said, I want to go to Provence. And he said he had lived there. He goes, oh, my God, the food, the fresh food in France. You will not believe it. There's nothing like it. Yes, He uh, went on and on. He just couldn't stop talking about how beautiful it is and how incredible of a sensory nourishment it is. Where is your favorite place in France? Well, Provence, where where my family, where I live. uh, And now I spend the summer. And it's really, it's really, uh, I must admit that um, nothing tastes the same anywhere else. (laughs) I, I... (laughs) Uh, I, I I can't. And people who come, you know, I have, I have visitors from all over the world, a lot from the U.S., obviously. And so many friends have said to me, oh, my God, I can never t- taste another peach and, and not think about the peaches we had at your house or the strawberries or the fresh goat cheese or the, you know, the ratatouille. Because even, even the, of course, I'm in a huge farm area and you get things, you know, uh, picked at, at perfect ripeness and two hours later you have them at the market or you go to farms and buy a basket and 
So that's very crucial, you know. Buying local is something we've always done in France, and it helps a lot, you know. Does your husband love Provence? Oh, he adores it. <laughs> Unfortunately, he has to he has to work, and he does some back and forth, and uh, it's it's kind of exhausting. But uh, yes, he 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 loves he loves the 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 life there, and he loves, of course, he's a great gardener, and he loves the the flowers and the lavender and the rose bushes, and of course the the irises in the spring and the almond trees and. It's for the senses. It's like it's like one of the greatest places on earth. I mean, in my book, I have an idea. Yes. Why don't you get your husband to bring you into his company so you can explain to his company why it's in their best interest to give him six weeks of vacation? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he is he has a, he's president of a university and he has uh, uh, about twenty thousand people. Um, uh, that would be hard to convince that he, he has to work during the summer. He's not a professor anymore, so he has to be there. And you know, his campus is all over the world. He has to travel a lot, and that's that's. But, and he loves it, you know. But uh, when he's in Provence, it's really you know recharging the batteries, and it's total escape. And uh, he cooks, and he goes to the market. He loves to go to the market, and. Uh, uh, you know, welcoming friends and and sitting at the table and having these wonderful meals three hours in the evening when it's light until eleven o'clock and it's just wonderful. How long do you go to Provence for? The whole summer? Uh, yes, I just came. I we had I had some commitments for some charities and and dinner parties this week, so I had to come and some interviews. Um, so I had to come back for a week, but uh, usually I'm, you know, we leave like um, for Memorial Day, and I stay until before Labor Day. So I'm really spoiled, and I really uh, cherish my my new life that entitles me to uh, stay in a home, which you know before I could only go for like a week, a year, and uh, a week doesn't just doesn't do it. <laughs> And all the activities, too, you know, the biking, the swimming, the walks. I mean, it's just splendid. Well, I look forward to meeting you in Provence. and Anytime, I'm my guest. <laughs> I'm so, so delighted. I have many friends. <laughs> this summer, I have friends from, let's say, from New York, from Chicago, from not at the same time, but from San <laughs> Francisco, uh, Vancouver. I have a lot of friends coming, uh, Toronto. Um, so far, that's it. And, and of course, a lot of friends from Paris and Europe and, and even Asia. So, uh, we have an open house and we love to entertain and we love to show them what I call my Provence, which is, which is, you know, the Van Gogh area and the, the Alpi, the end of the Alps and, and it's really glorious. I think I understand why you're considered the high priestess of French lady wisdom. No, please. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, I, it was a French French man. I think we say that. <laughs> uh, I I don't know when people. I, I should erase it from my. Um, of course, you can't erase anything on the internet these days. But <laughs> so many people use that and say I'm anything but a priestess. I'm not. You know, I don't um, like to impose my views. I just like to suggest and share and hope that. I can help people making decisions or making changes or taking risk and and especially young people because I still do a lot of mentoring and actually many of my young mentors are visiting. Uh, one is an American girl who just got her big um, job of her life working for a French company in Paris and is now in an intensive training class to to learn to improve her French and will start uh, working for a French company is very happy. So she's going to visit me uh, one weekend this summer. So it's, it's very nice to see that, uh, you know, what I call my, my small French quiet revolu- revolution to make a difference in people's life. You certainly do. And thank you so much for sharing your time and your energy and your life experience with us, both in your books and well, with your you. voice, and we welcome you back. I'm going to read another one of your books. Well, now I have to write a few more books to get back on, <laughs> <laughs> on your radio show. <laughs> but I just so appreciate you coming on and sharing, and it really does make a difference. Thank you, Mireille Giuliano, for being our guest today. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have been talking with, learning from, and listening to Mireille Giuliano. She is the former CEO.